Hey, everybody. I wanted to thank Kay uh, and Sue and Jenny uh, for uh, putting all of this together. And, and, uh, and of course, my techie wife, Martha, who's uh, the brains of the outfit, if you hadn't figured that out already. Uh, and we'll try to, this is our first Zoom class. So we're, we're kind of uh, on a learning curve, but uh, you know, it's maybe good to teach old dogs new tricks and that kind of thing. But thank all of you for being here and spend a little time with me and uh, hopefully the painting will go reasonably well. And uh, so, so thanks uh, for having me. And I, I always enjoy going to Arizona. It's, it's uh, Tucson is a wonderful town and I'm sorry that I'm not there, uh, but I guess this is gonna have to be the next best thing. Uh, I wanted to do a demo for you of, uh, last year I was in uh, Sedona uh, with the Sedona Work, uh, Watercolor Society and uh, did a class there and did a lot of photography and some painting there, but uh, uh, I wanted to do a, uh, a gosh, Sedona is, uh, you have a beautiful state in Arizona, you know that, and uh, and Sedona is a special place, uh, kind of unique even, uh, no place quite like it. So I wanted to do a, a demo painting uh, of that. So uh, rather than uh, burn all the time talking, I'm going to uh, switch over to the painting and we'll, we'll talk about uh, my preparation for painting and we'll jump right in. Okay, Martha. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And can I get up? Yeah. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Martha, you might want to give him the gallery view so he can see the people. The gallery view. So you can see everybody on the monitor. Okay. Okay, I'm ready if all of you are. Oh, I need to move this up. Okay, can y'all hear me? Yes. Everybody? How about you, Judy? Okay, Judy can you hear me. Mike, you there? Mike's there. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> this is a photograph, uh, uh, let's see, I want to hold it up a little closer so y'all can see it a little bit better. Uh, but anyway, that's, all of you probably been to Sedona any number of times. Uh, my hotel was right there in a wonderful place in the late afternoon sun hitting those rocks is so special. Uh, it's not, uh, I, trying to get it up as close as I can get it so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, now, as I always do, uh, I don't just try to copy this photograph. I do a couple of drawings, uh, design drawings, move things around, change a little bit, uh, emphasize things or de-emphasize things. So what I do, and one of the things we'll talk about when I when we have our classes uh, in a month or so is I try to work uh, uh, to design the rectangle so that it is uh, an impression of the uh, scene, but I've changed a few things to make it a little visually more entertaining. You can see that I have closed the gap between those two mountain heads and the tree that is in the uh, bottom left, just barely catching the uh, edge of the, the mountain. I uh, gave it a good shot of 888 and it grew up all the way to the top of the, to the top of the painting. So I uh, kind of rearranged and adjusted reality to suit my visual needs. And that's something we'll talk about more uh, in our classes coming up. 
Uh, there are lots of ways to start a painting, uh, but especially in demonstration, and this will be one of the things we'll talk about in class as well, is the different approaches that we have. I'm gonna move this aside while I wet the page down. Uh, and this is what I call the direct approach. And I was taught, I guess so many of us have taught, I'm gonna talk while I'm uh, wetting the page down, uh, to paint basically uh, from light to middle to dark. That's the normal approach to uh, uh, painting a watercolor scene. But this is called the direct approach. And what the direct approach, how it's different is we're pre-wetting the page as I'm doing now, putting a lot of water on it. Now I'll show you this in more detail in one of our classes, but I'm really getting the page wet in advance. The whole page. And then I'm going to go into the middle value range directly. And that's why it's called the direct approach. And basically that, that's going to solve a problem that so many of us have in that it just makes sense that our beginning wash is uh, in, when we're painting the lights is uh, fresh and uh, vi vivid, vital. Uh, because we're we're putting down that light pigment right on clean white paper. But oftentimes by the time we get to middle value and dark, that's where the mud comes or that's where the neutrality comes. Uh, we've stacked two or three layers on top of each other by the time we get to middle value. And so less light is getting through the page. And so what I'm doing here is I'm wetting down the surface of the page. And then, uh, and it, honey, is there any way we can uh, show them the palette bigger uh, quickly? Uh, yes, and you can tell them colors. Yeah, I, I'm gonna tell, uh, tell them the colors, but I, I just wanna show them the mixture first. Okay, okay. keep in mind the, uh, the water is, there we go, the water's already on the page and so, I'm gonna come in with and mix, and I'm gonna tell you the colors I'm using in just a minute. Martha's coaching me here. Uh, do you see how thickly I'm mixing, st strong I'm mixing this pigment. Uh, it's not pure pigment. Uh, I'm gonna neutralize it just a little bit, but it's much richer uh, than, it, if I tilt the palette up, it doesn't run around. And so keep in mind, I have the, uh, the water on the page. And so I'm coming in and directly applying that to the page. And there's a richness in that pigment, a richness in the middle value range uh, that could be missing if we uh, were painting light delicacies at this time. And so I'm mixing, strengthening up, going into middle value and even beyond middle value, right, or, or I should say directly on the page. And same here with the a different mixture uh, of violets that get into the middle value range. I'm leaving the lights just white paper right now and allowing this to go directly into the middle value range and even, and even darker than, than middle value. So what happens is there's a vitality. Uh, I need to ask a question. Honey, I'm seeing everything upside down. Are they seeing it right side up? <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm reaching in. I'm not using pure pigment, if you can see into the palette, but I'm just watering it down with just enough water. I'm trying to get some variations on the mixtures. Uh, but all somewhere, I guess, in the middle value range. So the, those strong colors 
uh, are vivid and they have a certain vitality to them, a quite, quite pleasing. I'm gonna water this down just a little bit in here. And then I'm moving down and placing a few counterbalances uh, on the page. I'm using a uh, fairly limited palette. Only five or six colors are going to be used. Uh, and those colors are basically two blues, manganese blue and uh, Joe's blue. I'm, I use the American Journey paint. Uh, so it's called Joe's blue, but that depending on your brand, it's thalo blue or peacock blue or uh, Windsor blue. They're all, every brand has that color uh, and it's actually uh, true blue. I'm putting it over here on the, on my mixing palette. Can y'all see that at all? No. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, we can see it, Don. Thanks. We can. Okay, good. Uh, that will mix to a beautiful, and the yellows, I'm sorry, I get ahead of myself. The yellows I'm using are uh, Ariolan and Burnt Sienna. The reds are what what is called Red Hot Mama, which is Scarlet Lake. It's any light hot red. And then Magenta, which is actually true red. And so I'm limiting myself to that uh, and intermixing, and that will give a certain harmonious feeling, even though it should be reasonably colorful there'll be some harmony in the color. Uh, I'm using th that Aurelian over here. I like a big mixing area here. And we're just coming in and, and bringing in the first layering uh, of a light green. And things will strengthen up uh, in short, uh, shortly, yeah. Can I put this? Yes, yes. Here, let me put it back up. I'm going to put it there. So they can see. Yes, yeah, so they can see. Okay, I'm kind of moving around the page. Uh, and this is not, uh, which I do a lot, I guess. I, I would be just starting with light colors and light values, but here uh, we're using uh, uh, some middle values and uh, middle lights to get us started with. And just bringing in a, a variety of those colors on the page. And the page, uh, Gee, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's it's drying kind of quickly, so I'm having to move along fairly fast. And I'm just if you'll notice what I'm doing. If I put this reddish brown into that green, it's going to neutralize it. And uh, so I, I have that green there. I'm just letting that come up and touch the edge and just touch the edge there so that they, they stay vital and they stay fresh. Uh, they are compliments. And, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm, if I were to take the brush and go uh, uh, across them, then they would neutralize very, very quickly. Huh. I'm leaving the sky off uh, for now. I'm gonna mix some of this, using the same colors for the tree, the, our big tree over here. I'm all, this, this color, uh, can you see outside, when I put that green down here, 
uh, it's pretty uh, vivid and pretty strong. I'm gonna be covering up most of these greens here, but this big tree, uh, the, I don't know if it's pine or spruce or what it is, I, it, it's a much warmer green. So I'm taking the green that I have and mixing it in with a little bit of that uh, mixture of red uh, that is this stuff. And we're coming in and if you, I don't know if you can see, uh, but it's a, it's a, a warmer green, it, which kind of tells the story of a pine tree or, or that kind of thing. And again, I'm going pretty much into the middle value range right off the bat. Little bit of texture. And I, it's so important to intermix colors. Find a new answer for what color you're using. I'm taking that yellow and putting it into this red. I need something for the first layering of our tree trunk. And that will be uh, kind of guaranteed that that is going to be uh, a harmonious or have a, a harmony with the other colors in, in the painting because it has some of the yellows that made the green. It has some of the reds that made the earth. And so there's a certain freshness and vitality, a sense of belonging together that we're able to accomplish when we intermingle these colors. And I should say intermix these colors. Okay. Actually, it's kind of, you know, I was going to have to stop and wet, uh, dry this off. Uh, but it's drying so fast, I guess, under these lights that uh, I, I think I'm okay to, to go ahead. Uh, Don, can you tell us about the brush you're using? Yes. Uh, I use synthetic brushes. I like them. I uh, have used different synthetics uh, over the years. Uh, this one is uh, Cheap Joe's. Everybody knows Cheap Joe. Uh, and a synthetic brush that really is uh, inexpensive. Uh, I, I doubt it, it's probably less than $10. It's a half inch uh, flat. I'm gonna soften this edge and soften these edges. And uh, I've used those synthetics uh, uh, since they came out. And I, I've just been, the reason I like them so much is they have a lot of spring. If you have a brush, and, and the sables and all, they're, they're wonderful points. They last a lifetime. They do so many things well, uh, but they're soft. Uh, and so when you make a stroke, the, the point is nice and pointy, but it bends left or right, so to speak. It's, they're not good for softening edges. Uh, this brush has a lot of snap to it. So when I bend it to its side like this, it jumps back to a nice point. And, uh, and that's, that is a quality that I really utilize a lot because I'm doing the softening of edges as I'm painting. So I like the synthetic brushes I have. You, you, you guys can't see it, but uh, just off camera, I have uh, loads of them. I use uh, the Cheap Joes, uh, which I recommend. They're very inexpensive. And I also have many of the... Uh, of the Robert, Robert Simmons, uh, which are also very uh, useful. And I've used those for a number of years. Okay, I'm leaving the sky off. I'm gonna go ahead and start moving into uh, a few darker values now that we've got these middle values established. Uh, and so I'm going in, 
I'm going to mix that green over here so y'all can see it a little better. Uh, this is a beautiful blue. I just love that blue. Let me lighten it. it just, that's just a gorgeous thing. It's uh, Joe's blue. But that is not, uh, doesn't represent uh, the, the green, uh, using that doesn't represent the greens of nature. That's a beautiful green. But uh, I would challenge you to go somewhere in Arizona and find me a tree that's that color. And so as we said before, if I take that green, I'm going to lighten it up a bit and just neutralize it, it comes to a much more natural uh, uh, shade of green, which we see uh, much more in nature. So let me, anytime I get lost or just going to pull these trees forward a little bit. I might lighten them just a bit. Just some symbols, indications of uh, asking the viewer to interpret these as trees. Uh, sometimes I'll write trees with an arrow so it helps the viewer out a little. That was a joke, everybody. <laughs> and then, then coming in and just giving a little hint of, uh, of, of the direction of the, of the trees. And I just keep mixing different pigments, different colors. Mm. Painting in the direction of the growth, in the direction of the, of the growth of the trees. Uh, symbols that are perhaps indicative of trees rather than being uh, totally uh, exact to what these trees are. letting one kind of blend into the next. <laughs> Trying to put the paint. If you'll notice, I'm, it, and it's still a little damp there. I'm just putting this pigment down. Uh, directly on the page and and placing those colors next to rather than into each other. And just making a, a I need a tree that's bigger because it gets up a little closer to give us a little perspective. And I'll darken that. This is Prussian blue that I'm coming in with, uh, which is quite, it's like a blue black. Uh, and that also makes for a very nice uh, green for the, for the foliage. Just hinting at a couple of tree shapes, I guess. And while, uh, while all of this is drying, I'm going to wet down the sky and we'll bring in the first wash of the sky. And I'm going to clean up just a little bit. Uh, Boy, one good thing is uh, I don't have to stop and, and use the hair dryer. That's such a, an exciting part of the presentation, watching paint dry. I'm also using my fingers to just lift out a little texture uh, into the trees. I'm using uh, manganese blue and Red Hot Mama together will we'll make a gray. 
and I always want to have a couple of colors that I'm using are opposites enough to make a, a neutral gray, and you can see it there. Uh, I want this painting to be colorful, and one of the things that I teach and we'll talk about in, in one of our classes is that if you want to paint uh, a colorful painting, you need to have some neutrals, uh, but they should be beautiful, not just mud. And so uh, one of the, er, everything in painting uh, is, a, is a, a, uh, a lesson in contrast. So if we want a, a neutralized painting, we put in just a little bit of color. If we want a, a colorful painting, we'll put in just a little bit of neutral. And I'm just getting this page wet enough so that it will, I'm about to paint the gray of a cloud and that should blend just a little bit. I've got it pre-mixed and we'll just bring that gray uh, into and a little more over here and let that blend on the page. And then I'm coming in with the manganese uh, and I'm going to switch over to a little bit larger brush. And we're going to, I'm kind of powering that manganese up a little. I want it nice and strong to play against the lights that I'm saving on the on the uh, base of the rocks. These little white lights I'm trying to paint around uh, I try to get rid of them so that they're uh, they're not taking away the strength of the light in the painting. It, and then while it's while it is nice and wet, I'm coming in with the darker blue that uh, that Joe's blue, and just letting the sky be a bit darker, and and gradually fade lighter as it gets close to the uh, horizon. And I'm gonna just emphasize that a bit more and let it blend down softly. I want that to fade a little more gradually. So I'm coming in and feathering it out, I guess, as, as we're bringing it down. And a bit more of that gray mixed into the blue so the clouds get a, a bit darker on the on the bottom okay one of the things i also do and, and I remind myself i don't know where i heard this has been uh i don't want to say how many years ago but somebody once told me uh what you if you want to organize a page, what you have up in the top, put a little bit in the bottom. What you have in the left, put a little bit on the right. Counterbalance on the page. So even I'm not looking at the photograph, it's not there, but I'm taking the blue of the sky and just sneaking that in a little bit uh, into some of the textures in the, in the rocks. And 
that will counterbalance on the page. I also will take some of the blue that's in the sky and stick it into uh, some of the trees. And again, that makes it belong. It, uh, I love to quote an no, old teacher, his name was Ed Whitney. Some of you may know him or know of him. And one of his quotes was, sacrifice everything in your painting for unity. Make things belong together. And so we, we are, we're taking liberties with reality for the sake of the painting. Uh, uh, and that, that just makes everything uh, more unified. Okay, I'm going to, while, while we're waiting on some of this to dry, now uh, we're, we're uh, getting close anyway to the, here I'm sticking a little more of that blue, that sky blue down in there, down in there. That'll, that'll make this belong uh, better. Uh, People, um, huh? somebody wanted to know what weight paper, what paper you're using, okay. and are you at an angle? Yes. Okay. Uh, can they hear me when I ask? Uh, they can hear me, yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody asked about the paper, the, the weight, and the angle, uh, and the answer is yes to all the above. Uh, now, the, this 140-pound arches cold press. Uh, and I, I use that a lot. I'm sure all of you are familiar with it. Uh, and the angle of the board, I used to have paint at a dramatic angle, uh, like 45 degrees, but now we're talking about maybe half that, maybe 20 degrees or something along those lines. So uh, it, it does allow or ask the paint to blend a bit on the page, but it's not nearly as dramatic uh, as I did in the old days. Uh, and now we'll put just a bit of this far away ridge. And while all of that is drying, I'm, this should be dry. It's, it's bone dry in here. And so I'm coming in. I don't want this to be too uh, uh, hard edged. Uh, and we do have bulldogs. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear the bulldogs? Somebody did. Suzanne heard the bulldog. Uh, so I'm pre wetting this area, getting it wet, getting it wet. And then I'm, it, I don't know that if y'all can see it, but they, there are little textural ribs uh, on these mountains that uh, are delicacies, I should say, very tender. And I want to indicate them. I don't even know if y'all can see. Uh, these are just little bitty soft changes that happen in the rocks that are indicative of those rocks. And I'll strengthen that up just a little bit more. There we go. Just some light touches there. And that tells a bit more about the texture of the rocks. And then I'll come in while it's wet. I use that little brush and just kind of soften them up a little bit, soften them up just a bit. And I'll kind of do that a little and maybe change the color just so it's not repeating exactly the same colors too much too many times. Just a little texture. Barely, barely touching the page. Okay. 
Okay. Now, I want to bring in some strength of pigment. This guy might not be quite ready. Uh, I, what I'm saying is it might still be wet. And uh, I don't want the, the mountains to blend off into the sky. I'm mixing that paint nice and thick. Uh, I'm going to pre-wet the the areas of the shadows here so it'll blend a little bit. Don, a member has a question. Let me know when you can take it. Okay, I can take it. Okay, is the phthalo blue a red phthalo or green phthalo? Uh, well, it shows what I know. I didn't know there was such a thing. Uh, it's Joe's blue, so I would guess it's uh, it blue. is. I would say that it's the blue. Uh, uh, I didn't know there was a red, but uh, I'm pretty sure that it would be the, the blue. Just softening up a little bit. It's a wonderful color, but it's kind of fussy. Uh, and I like it, uh, but it, it wants to take over. And what I usually find is that it has to be uh, calmed down or, or balanced or uh, blended out a little bit so that it's, it's not pure. You know, and every uh, every brand has different pigment makeups and, and that kind of thing. Uh, and you know, that's kind of what what makes horse races. But I've used uh, I've used the American Journey for a long time now, and uh, pretty well pleased with it. Uh, it's a good value and, uh, and I like those big tubes that comes in that, that really helps as well. Can you tell the story about Joe? Oh, the story about Joe in, uh, in Maine? <laughs> uh, is that the one you're talking about? Oh, you can't hear me? See, see the, the, uh, the sky was just a little bit damp, a little bit damp, although that's kind of a cool edge there. And so I'm going to keep that. I might clean this up just a little bit there. But it has a textural effect that's kind of pleasing. And uh, I have to take the blame for all the bad things that happen in painting. I'm gonna take the, take the credit for all the good things that happen, whether I meant for it to happen or not. Yeah. Uh, tell, I, I don't know whether Kay wants to keep it to a certain time. But, um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I have no idea how long this has been going on, uh, but we're close to finish. I don't think anybody's uh, bothered. If they are, they can. Yeah, I guess that's leave. true. You know, but you know, we can't rush the artist. <laughs> well, we are almost done. I really, I, I hope y'all can see that. Uh, yeah. That has worked out 
pretty well there. They're just a little foliage on the edges of these mountains that kind of frame the and hold the uh, uh, the light in the mountains there. So I'm kind of taking advantage of that. One of my trees got lost here. Okay. All right. Well, I've got that on here. Now we'll come in and put a little texture into our trees. I need them to be fairly dark, a little variety in the greens here, little texture along the edges. That's where we see texture mainly are on the, the edges of things. And let that go. Ah, it's not quite dry. Come on now. Right. See that green, I'm coming in and <clears throat> bringing burnt sienna into it to neutralize it so that it looks a little more like a, a, na a nature's green. I don't want to get too involved in this tree. It's not the main character, but I want to tell enough about it. <coughs> Excuse me. It sh this detail should bring it forward just a little bit. And give people a better idea. Now, in doing that, <clears throat> see it's all dry. It's almost too demanding there. So I'm going to come in right away and just touch into some of the edges and let them blend out of focus a bit and a little warmer as well. Okay, and just give some hint of texture. This this area, ah, you know what? I thought I was going to make it all the way through, but I, it's starting to drip a little bit. And I don't want it to. It's always one of my favorite parts of the demo. I'm going to scratch out a couple of little lights. Okay. okay. And just want some hint of, of texture uh, on 
one of the things I like to do, overlap. It makes things three-dimensional. I don't want this branch to just stop right here at the beginning of the mountain, but we'll, we'll let it come on down into and let it turn up a time or two. And that overlaps. It makes things more three-dimensional. So I try to, to tie things together that way. I could make it a bit thicker. Maybe make the tree trunk a little round. We're close, everybody. I want to capture this light a little. I like that dramatic light there, but it needs to be found just a bit more. Look at that. Soften just a few of these lights in here so they're not all cut out, all hard edged. And maybe a good strong dark a time or two. too much tickling. Okay, I'm going to put a, 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 a mat on it and, uh, and see where we are. I don't know who invented mats, but we ought to build a shrine to them. I, I've never painted a painting that didn't look better when I put a mat on it. So whoever they are, thank you. Okay. The goal here, uh, oh dear. Yeah, here it is. There. Oh, wow. Matt always helps. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the things we're going to talk about in class is, is one of my most important lessons uh, we'll have is on light. It is so important that we, us, the artist, controls the light. Uh, and so I'm making sure we have light things going on through the painting, but where's the best light? It's on the main character. So I'm saving that. Uh, blast of light to be the only dominant whites of light and they're soft in edge but but they demand attention uh, we're going to talk about contrast we're going to talk about color uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, I hinted at uh, uh, a lesson on color harmony that we'll <clears throat> we'll get to a lot of different color and design lessons for our four day class, but <clears throat> and, and if you think about it, uh, every lesson you've ever had in art could be boiled down to the word contrast. We talk about light against dark, warm against cool, 
uh, hard edges against soft edges, uh, interest and rest. We could go on and on talking about those tools that we use to build a painting. But always remember this, and I'll leave you with that, is there's one contrast that calls the eye, that demands attention more than any other possibility, and that's lightest light against darkest dark. And so to you and me, to us artists, that's like our best tool. And so don't let nature just tell you where to put the light. The nature puts the light on the main characters and on the supporting cast. And so I'm above all else, I want to be in control of where the best lights and darks are found. Well, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, <clears throat> I hope I didn't run over too long. I'm not sure actually how long it took, but. Uh, it was about 45 minutes, Don. Okay, and well that, that for me, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, that was excellent. Uh, well, thank you. I want to thank everybody for uh, uh, you. You, I was a, a Zoom virgin, and so all of you uh, <laughs> have helped me jump uh, to the other side. And I enjoyed doing this. It was a learning experience uh, for both Martha and me. Uh, again, I want to thank Kay and Susan and uh, Jenny, especially for all their technical uh, help. And I hope to see all of you in about a month or six weeks. We have two two-day classes. I think you could take all four if you like. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, I, hope, uh, I hope every single one of you can get away and, uh, and be with me in about, I think it's the second week of November-ish, somewhere in there. So. So thank you again. Thanks for uh, putting up with all of this, and I'll see you in a month. Don, thank you so much. On behalf of SOG, I'm sure everybody is applauding. And uh, just for exactness, he's teaching two two-day workshops, November 10th and 11th, and November 12th and 13th. There's still room in those uh, in some slots, so uh, it's not too late to sign up. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I, I love that looseness. Uh, when I saw that little brush going around and going crazy out there, I just, it made me smile. I hope it did for all of you.